Due to recent events, lots of people have started to hoard food, and when you hoard food, you donate less. Which is why we filled six semi-trucks with over one million dollars worth of food. So in this particular box, there's stacks of bacon. Did you say bacon? Yes, bacon. You're just so happy that Mr. Beast bought a, a whole store full of food and donated it to the poor, right? What did that include? Death, <laughs> death and suffering. The whole thing is wrong. Nothing that he did in that equation was good. Hello everyone, and today we are talking about the final boss of veganism, that vegan teacher. You may have heard of her before. She's been on the internet since around 2020, and around sometime last year she was banned from TikTok. And the internet celebrated for a while. But she is like a cockroach that cannot be squashed. She has made numerous new TikToks and a YouTube channel. She cannot be taken down by mere mortals, you see. But in all seriousness, let's kind of go over why she was banned in the first place and why she's just problematic even today. One, being an extreme vegan. Being a vegan is not a problem by itself. It's when you take it to extreme levels. She acts like everyone who isn't a vegan is a terrible person. If you're a vegetarian, you're a hypocrite. And she does compare animals to people. And overall, she just tries to make you feel like garbage if you are not a vegan. And her tactics of letting people know what's happening in the meat industry is a little disgusting. She throws around the R word a lot and compares human suffering to animal suffering. I'm also not saying that what's happening in the meat industry is okay. I do think it's bad to mistreat the animals the way they are doing right now. But to compare that to human anguish and loss is disgusting. There are just so many better ways to encourage people to go vegan than what that vegan teacher is doing. For one, respectfully explaining the problems in the meat industry. Another problem I have with that vegan teacher shaming people is, is it even healthy for a person to completely cut out meat in the first place? In this article it says, generally they have lower risk of heart disease than people who do eat meat. But then you go on to the next article and it says, you'll need to supplement many things in your body such as iron, calcium, vitamins A, B, and D, which that can be expensive and not every body can take that. It says here, if meat is simply removed and not substituted, the consumer is at risk of iron or B12 deficiency, anemia, and muscle wasting. The best decision I've seen for a person to do is to just cut down or cut back on their meat intake rather than completely cutting it out, that is the healthiest option. But of course you have to take into account, people do consider these things when going vegan. My issue is that vegan teacher does not seem to care about this aspect of the vegan diet. She's even forced her own dog to go vegan as well, which also has its health risks if she is not very careful. Hello everyone! This is Bella Vegan Dog, and she's about to eat her vegan dog food, which is made entirely from plants. The doctor has said that Bella is completely healthy, and this is what the dog food looks like. She's completely healthy, her pee is normal, her poo is normal, and everything about her is completely normal. So if Bella can be vegan, so can you. So what are you waiting for? Go vegan! She acts like it's very simple to go vegan, but it really isn't. It seems to me the thought never crossed her mind that one, might not be able to be vegan because of health reasons, and two, because of financial reasons. Since she is that vegan teacher, I'm gonna assume she's oriented towards kids, which they have zero control about what they can consume. It's all based on their parents and the school system, which they serve milk in schools. And just so we're clear, I'm not trying to attack all vegans. I think what they do is great. But I just think that the mantra of just go vegan is the same as, oh, the solution to the gas prices is just to have a Tesla. But moving on from that, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more about the beginning segment of this video, where the vegan teacher is saying Mr. Beast is basically terrible. Just so happy that Mr. Beast bought a, a whole store full of food and donated it to the poor, right? What did that include? Dead bodies who suffered. 
Innocent chickens who were murdered with their throats. A bunch of eggs that came from a cycle of violence where baby boy chicks are ground up alive. A bunch of milk products that came from the throats of newborn baby calves because we stole their milk. The whole thing is wrong. Nothing that he did in that equation was good. This is what I'm talking about when I say she disgustingly describes what is going on in the meat industry. It is nobody who consumes meat from the grocery store's fault that animals are treated this way. Please take your arguments to people in legislation or people who own these sort of facilities. Nikocado Avocado, you fail again. You fail ethics class. You fail at being a decent human. You are a piece of <laughs> That's what you are. Let's change the laws and have these kinds of people removed from the planet. Now I just found this clip a little ironic because Nukakado Avocado is a mukbang YouTuber who was vegan before. The reason he's not vegan is because of people like that vegan teacher. I remember when I stopped being raw vegan and I got just attacked on the internet. People just coming at me saying that what I was doing was wrong. Why make your whole life's mission to make everyone eat the same way you do? After a while it gets, it gets exhausting. I'm already vegan, I'm already converted vegan, I already make videos about veganism and you're telling me I still need to do more. That vegan teacher is very similar to these vegans that Nikocado was describing. Very extreme. Nothing he did was right, even though he was already vegan. And I truly believe if that vegan teacher really wanted people to go vegan, she wouldn't be shaming people. Shaming people actually has the opposite effect she wants. And these are not the only things she said. She has been very cruel with her words about different issues and then somehow relating it to veganism. No matter how many surgeries she has, women cannot become a cat, a dog, a frog, or a man. If she wants to be called he, that's fine, but it doesn't mean she has become one. I read the comments of this post and this post was not very well received to people who are trans or support the trans community. I have no idea how this supports her vegan cause or really what its relevance was to her, but she still felt the need to post it. Coming out as a member of the LGBTQ community as an entirely selfish act. Stop the cap! <laughs> Basically what she was saying in this clip was, it is selfish to come out as gay, for example, and it is entirely unselfish and the most righteous thing you can do to come out as vegan. And the craziest thing to me is she claims to be bisexual, but she's bullying people within her community about not being vegan. I guess all I can really say is she's a special little donut. You f***ing donut. Hello everyone, and especially you, members of the LGBTQ community. Oh no, this is horrible. Why the f*** aren't you vegan yet? F*** you. Huh? What's your excuse? You don't, you don't like oppression, right? So why are you oppressing others? That's what I want to know. If you don't like oppression, why do you pay your people to do it to another group of individuals? Innocent, turkeys, pigs, lambs, sheep, rabbits, all of these innocent animals who are exploited in the industry. Why do you pay for that? And at the same time yell, oh, but I'm so oppressed. Meanwhile, you are doing the oppressing yourself. And it doesn't get better from here. If anything, it just gets worse. Does this girl seem to you like she might be naturally intelligent, gorgeous, generous, exemplary, and radiant? She looks like she could be that to me. She says ban cruelty, not words. But if I was to guess, there's some cruelty behind the words, which is why people don't say the words. And that's not really a groundbreaking thought. But the worst thing I think she has done is compared the hardships of people to those of animals. What happened in World War II was racism and it was wrong. What's happening now is speciesism and it's also wrong. We need to be kind to all kinds and should be vegan from now on. I find it really disgusting that she's comparing animals to humans. That's dehumanizing the people that went through that during World War II. And she continues. She wrote a little song about it. 
The animals are innocent. They need a bill of rights. Stop R-wording them, enslaving them, terrifying them day and night. He said to me, what's factory farming? I said, you don't know what factory farming is? He said, this is where they have like billions of animals trapped in cages. Just like conditions, just like what the Nazis went through, did to the Jews. And he said, what do you mean? What? Who? I said, the Nazis, they did to the Jews. But you know, the lions don't go around putting millions of, of animals into, into concentration-like places, like concentration camps, like the Jews suffered. In the at the hands of the Nazis, that is what happens. The never ended for the animals. I use the word to explain that it never ended for the animals. And she continues. Jewish vegans have told me to use the word. I am listening to them. Love needs to win, and I will see to it that it does. Isn't that funny? Because I keep seeing tons and tons of TikToks responding to this, saying that they do not find it good at all. They do not want you to use that word in this context whatsoever. Thank you to the Jewish community for understanding. No, not only do we not understand, we find your comments to be detestable and in general, your videos to be abhorrent. If you don't know that word, look it up. Stop being racist, stop being sexist, stop being homophobic, stop being ageist, stop being ableist, stop being vegan phobic. If you don't like number six on this list, sorry, but you have to admit, you're a hypocrite. Please stop vegan phobia. Stop it. Get some help. I don't think vegan phobia is in the same vein as homophobia, racism and all these very terrible things, I think lumping them together, it truly discredits the people who have been through these things. Adding the word phobic to something makes it very loaded because of the connotation behind it. And in this case, it's not that serious. All the things she mentioned in her little jingle were things people cannot change about themselves besides being vegan, so adding phobic to it seems ridiculous to me. But hey, go off, sis. But anyways, I just wanted to cover this topic because I strongly disagree with how she's going about this, and part of me thinks that this is all for just attention and she's not really advocating for the animals anyway. And that is just her extreme comparisons with animals and people and the word vegan phobic. But please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is she truly an animal advocate? Is she doing this all for attention? Just let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all next time. Bye!